Hello, welcome back to this random table where I fix stuff. So today we've got this uh, ballot adding machine. Um, it kind of works, it's just kind of sticky. Um, so I don't expect this to be a super long video, but so you can enter and then this doesn't always return all the way. But it does kind of work. Of course, the ribbon is completely toasted, but I see it kind of sort of prints. Focus is broken. Um, so, let's see if we can get into this. It looks like the, you can see that the, um, they have a cutout here so you don't have to take the handle off. I'm not quite sure how exactly the, how it pins off, but I see some screws down here in the bottom. So we can probably start with that. So we can, if I can get an appropriate screw out of it, perhaps. I'm not sure what year this uh, machine is from. It's definitely a, a later style. I think the earlier ones didn't have this uh, crinkle paint finish on. I think they were just the uh, Bakelite. And a little bit uh, older style logo too, I think, on the, the older ones. So, short screws in there. Let's see if this will. I'm going to also take this apart. The style of this one, I'd say, is probably from the 40s, or I think the original original version of this machine came out in the 30s, I believe. It was actually made by um, the Monotype company, I mean the Monotype machines. They bought the design from someone and started manufacturing it themselves. And they actually had an older style, like a completely different machine under the Barrett name. So anyway, like I was saying, the um, before they started making these compact machines that had a much older, larger, full keyboard version, they also sold under the name Barrett. And I think some of those had some advanced features like um, automatic, not automatic, but um, like shifting and stuff built in so you could do multiplication easier. So now we can get a look at what all is involved here. To the keyboard here. Um, the drive train over here just has this rocker gear which drives that, which is attached to the shaft in the middle. So something in there is going to be somewhat stiff with dry grease. Focus is not working again. So then I'm going to take a look at this and see if I can figure out which part is sticking and lubricate it and see if we can go from there. Now, of course, this is going to be a similar style to all the keyboard machines with the pegboard. You can see the pointer moves out there as you type in. So the pegboard looks like it's going to be under the keyboard. You can see down there if I can make this a little bit brighter. You can see it moving over. Yeah, so you can see right there, that's going to be the pegboard. It slides on this rail here. You can see that, this rail right here. All right. Clear it, it pushes it back. So yeah, pretty, you know, pretty similar principles, just a different arrangement of the individual components. So a lot of these 10K machines have basically the same structure, just uh, different implementations of it. So. Let me see if I can figure out what's sticking and oil this up. So, so I spent some time um, looking at this and cleaning it up. And it seems to be the issue is just that the main spring that pulls the handle back isn't quite strong enough to overcome the spring tension of all the risers. So if you watch, see how the risers pop up? And now it stops here. And as I pull back more, you can see the risers start to drop. So it, just, so it just seems like
like the main spring isn't quite strong enough to overcome the spring tension of all, all the risers. If I hold the risers down on the return stroke, so I hold them down, it goes down a little bit faster, but not, not that much, but go down a little bit further. There's still you know, something else down, you know, but that's the main drag there. Um, so let's see, if I let it go here, it stops right about in this position. Now if I hold the riser down, you see it does go down a little bit further, so there's just something else that it's running into next, but I think the main, the main issue is the spring tension on these risers here. Um, I did try and um, put more tension on the driving spring, you can see. That's this, this spring down here um, hooks into the side frame here and also hooks into this wheel which rotates on the shaft. And there was, you can see here's the end of it here, and there's absolutely no tension on it at all. It's just completely loose. Um, I did try and pull this back into another hook down below, um, but when I did that, then the handle could only move up about, you know, to this position. And when you got to here, then the spring was wrapped so tightly around the shaft that you couldn't move it anymore. Like, literally, there was no more, um, the main shaft could not rotate anymore because the spring was completely taut around it, there's no slack, so um, couldn't have been couldn't have been that it popped out of there and sprang up here. This must be the position for it, but for whatever reason it's just not quite enough tension to overcome that. So I think that I'm going to put this back together now. Um, you know it does work pretty well. I'll have to put the ribbon in it obviously but we get some paper in here. If I do Let's see the total appears there, and that's the correct total, and it's also printing. Uh, I will replace the ribbon now the ribbon is actually it's getting a little bit better, but mostly dried out, so I'm going to replace it. And then if we do two cranks, we get the total, and that prints out just fine. So everything seems to be working. I can try repeat. That's five times 25. And 25, so yeah. I mean, everything seems to be working as far as I can tell, so. Um, just must be that for whatever reason, I don't know if that's by design or just that that spring got weaker over time. Um, but I mean, everything seems smooth. Like when I pull the handle up here, you know, all these are, are free. They're just, you know, the springs that, that operate them are stiff. So that's, that's just the way it's going to be. Um, so the only thing that holds the whole thing together are those four screws. Um, you can see these posts here. The screws go into the end of those. So when you set the the machine back in the frame, kind of dirty, these posts line up with these holes, which then line up with holes in the cover. So when you put those screws in, those screws both hold this to the frame and also hold the cover to the frame. So um, once you take those four screws out, you can take the cover off and take this off of the frame. So it's pretty easy to disassemble. You don't have to like fumble around with screws on the bottom or anything. Um, other than that, it's a pretty simple machine. So you can see the, all these rods down here. All these rods down here are the... Uh, actually, see, these ones down here are the risers. So, uh, when you move the handle, these rise up until they're stopped by the pegs on the bottom of the keyboard. And they're also attached to these risers up here. And just, you know, uh, pivot on the bottom there so that these are when these move, these also move. So when these move forward, these move up. And then there's also gears on the teeth on the back of them. Someone here, I can't really see. 
Um, but you can't really see. But this is the main register here, and then um, the teeth on the back of those spindles in there. Can you actually see that? You kind of see some teeth. I think these are just the. Actually, what? Yeah, so these must lock forward. So let's see if I put in a number. If you can watch that, if my tripod will cooperate, that is. So see what happens when we move the handle here. Of course, I should have put in. There, now we're all the way in. So now, yeah, you can see those will lock up, and then this is the register here that will drop down and engage, and it drives that way. So pretty much the same principle as all the other ten keyboard machines, um, just a little bit different implementation. So let's put this back together, change the ribbon. And should we wait for a quick demo? It's a pretty, pretty simple one here. Um, I would like to get this clear, but I just don't see any way. The only thing that seems to be is the, the spring must not have enough tension, which is weird. But anyway. Okay, so the ribbon's replaced. It's all back together. We'll just do a quick demo here. Probably raise this up somewhat, actually. Okay, that might be useful. I think you can see the numbers now. Yes. I should have done that before, but anyway. So one thing that I notice is I can't really see the pointer in the window, so I think that there might be a piece missing off that. Um, I didn't notice any pieces fall out. I don't even see. So remember when I had this part, there was that rod that moved across when you entered keys on the keyboard. So that's supposed to be visible through this window. Um, but I think that whatever, they probably had like a plastic pointer or something on the end of it that's showing up through the window. But that piece seems to have been lost long ago because I didn't fly out of the machine when I opened it. So it must have been lost, I guess, last time it was worked on, whatever that may be. Answer three 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 zero is correct. So we can just and we get our total. So addition seems to be working just fine, which we I have knew before. We're gonna do a quick multiplication. Let's do twenty-five times twenty-five. So we'll do twenty-five five times. And then we'll move it over one and then do it two times. Clear it out. And 625 is correct. So I think that about wraps it up for this one. That's another short one. Um, I guess I need to find stuff that's more broken to work on. The last two videos were kind of short, but anyway, hope you enjoyed this look at uh, the internals of uh, this, you know, pretty simple, pretty basic uh, out-listing machine, the Barrett. So I hope you enjoyed this video, and thank you for watching.